Hey, um, welcome to the University of Pamphlet. My name is Rob, and I'm the host of this one-man show. Um, yeah, hope you guys are doing good. Today is an interesting episode again. We're talking about something very serious today. Um, well, two topics mostly, but, well, three, I guess. One, one of the, well, the more, I would say, lighthearted in comparison type of, uh, topic that we're going to discuss is um, K-pop drama, and I'm going to get into this Sungan SM, Rise situation, and also a bit of a brief recap of what happened with um, Honey from New Jeans and her testimony uh, that happened like last week, I believe. Um, anyways, yeah, but the, main, the other main topic I want to talk about is... Liam Payne, uh, and his, well, I'm gonna touch briefly upon, like, his tragic death that, um, also happened this week, and a lot of different things as well. I would like to talk about, um, you know, bigger conversations on what the internet has, you know, been doing to this man, has been doing for years to this man, and, you know, culpability or who is it to like who should we blame you know like a lot of different things i would say sorry i'm trying to check if yeah yeah no, sorry i was trying to check if like the mic was recording properly but i think it is i think it is um but yeah um before we get into that first of all apologies again window open might be a lot of background noise but it might be not too loud thankfully because it's like quite late but um yeah it's warm again in the uk what the fuck just crazy i have to like leave the window open or it'd be too warm inside it's just insane but anyways um songs of the week first i want to talk about uh, charlotte day wilson i've been a fan for a while and i unfortunately missed the drop of her album called Cyan Blue of this year and but now I explored it there's a lot of great songs on there I would say quite different from her like some of the songs are quite different from her usual stuff but the one I liked the most was Dovetail um, just your run-of-the-mill I guess R&B a guitar type of track, like like guitar type of track, like a small, slow, like R and B ballad or something. But it's just something about her voice uh, and just everything. The entire, the entire slayage of it all is just so good. Um, so yeah, if you don't know anything about Charlotte uh, Day Wilson, she is sort of on the. Well, she's definitely an R&B artist, but sort of on the more mellow type of um, tracks, I guess. Like, she, she loves having a bit of a more chill and, you know, vibey type of R&B, which is, you know, great when you're in the mood for it. So, yeah, this track, incredible. incredible. The Dovetail, go uh, listen to it. If you want to listen to any other tracks from the album and you're curious about it, listen to Do You Still and Canopy as well. Those are great tracks, but I'm not going to be adding them to the playlist of the month. By the way, yeah, if you are looking for these tracks, as usual, they are in the playlist of the month on Spotify called The Overture Pamphlet, Songs of the Week, Dash, October, because this is an October episode, but... Duh. Um... Then, I want to add a song by Ketronada and Duran Bernard. Um, Ketronada has been a very famous, I would say, R&B producer and collaborator with a lot of R&B girlies, including uh, Char Charlotte uh, Day Wilson as well, but also he has collabor collaborated quite a few times with um, Pink Panthress, with uh, Revin Lene incredible songs honestly like he's produced so many great tracks and this is his own album and it's a very collaborative album of course because there's a lot of um the person the, the people he collaborated with on his new album and a lot of incredible tracks as well here um but my favorite one is weird 
it's called Weird, where with uh, Duran Bernard, which is, uh, which is another um, you know collaborator that he usually you know works with. He also has a song with Charles Gambino called Witchy, which is also pretty good. Snap My Finger by Kate Renard and Pink Panther is actually you know what? Let me also add that this one. Snap My Finger and Weird are gonna be in the playlist, bitch. I just made it up. I just like made the rules. I just made the rules. I, I'm, I'm, it's just you know. This is the R and B kind of like more danceable R and B. I would say a bit more fast paced, a bit more interesting. I would say very great production, um, very unique, um, and very groovy. I would say it's a very groovy track as well. Weird specifically. Out of uh, sorry, it's not my finger. Is more adjacent to what. Pink Pamphrys usually does, but it's also quite, you know, refreshing. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm a stan. I'm a stan. So, those two songs, l go listen to them. Maybe go listen to the entire pro project called Timeless, I believe. It's, like, split in two discs, into, like, two sides, I guess. Uh, but, yeah, pretty, pretty lit. Pretty lit stuff. I have so many songs. Okay, I have four songs left to discuss about, but... The next track is called UFO by Five, spelled as F, then the number five, and then VE. Um, this is a Japanese group. From what I've, I've I've heard, this group has been like around for quite a long time, but they've recently been sort of like experiencing like a renaissance, I would say, like with a different sound and a new you know, in a, in a new fresh image as well. They look more grown up. Actually, they're not, they're not, they haven't, sorry, I lied. They haven't been around, uh, around for so long, but they've been around for at least a year, I would say. Um, but their previous tracks, Fire Truck, whatever, uh, and the EP and the, whatever, the remixes, those were good, but they're not, they were not the same vibe as then when they switched in 2024. I think they switched, um, Image, they're a bit more like sexy and grown up. Japanese pop is just um, getting it there as well, I guess. I guess, but I think I discovered them through a TikTok viral. Well, it wasn't really viral, viral, I guess, but it came on a for you page and I was like, hold up, what the fuck is this? And their song was Lettuce, it was called Lettuce. Um, that is literally about, yeah, they're singing literally about lettuce, like the, the, the vegetable, you know, like the, the salad. The salad, but like you know, the, the, the lettuce, the lettuce. But it's funny, like like I think they say like you eat a lot of lettuce because you're toxic or something. Whatever, I don't know. But it's just funny track, very good, actually produced. Um, but besides that's besides the point. This song, the latest one that came out called UFO. Something about it is just so damn catchy, catchy, catchy. But um. Yeah, I don't have to describe it. I mean, part of it is concept-wise giving me TT by Twice. If you know, if you know, you know, I guess. But uh, so, but the production is completely different. But the chorus is very poppy and very um, traditional pop set type of uh, run of the mill. But which is really good, very catchy. I love it. But then the verses are very like experimental and very like alieny adjacent because the song is called UFO, of course. So yeah, uh, so pretty good stuff um and yeah i would say uh definitely give it a listen if well if you never if you never listen to j-pop i think this is a good way of getting into it because it's a quite like more passable to the west i would say so it's quite fun quite uh, energetic quite you know catchy so give it a listen you know <laughs> um then the next track, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and keep it as quick as I can, but it's just difficult. The next track, the next track is called Kokomo In, or IN, I don't know, but it's by the Japanese Breakfast from their, well, old ass album called Jubilee. But this song, I think, is uh, is just like it resurfaced recently in my playlist, and I was like, mm, this song is so good. Like this is really giving me, you know folky type of track um very you know aesthetic type of production um quite you know melancholy maybe i would say as well very very good very very good very very slay um 
Japanese breakfast. I mean, I hope you guys know them because they're they are so talented, and I just love everything they do. Uh, but yeah, Kokomo Inn. I think it's like maybe I, I I'm not sure. I'm I'm not sure about this, but maybe it's having a resurgence song on TikTok or something. But I haven't heard it on TikTok myself to be fair. Um, but I can see on Spotify now that it's the second most streamed song that they have. Oh, I mean, in terms of trending, like they're getting the most popular, second most popular track. Um, so people have been streaming it, I guess. So maybe there is something there, but I'm not really sure because this, I, I I said it before, but I think Spotify is really well. It's pretty natural. Like if TikTok is a it, like it's on a, it's in vogue and all that stuff. Like there they are, that like the people on in, on TikTok are making it viral and people are gonna check it out on Spotify. So it translates to that, I guess. Like what if you see. A, a song getting very popular might as well be that it's going viral on TikTok at the moment. So maybe that is it. But go listen to it. Um, Kokomo Inn, so good. Maybe it's Kokomo Ayan. I don't know. But really good track. If you like, and if you like the song, I would say just definitely listen to the album Jubilee because that's stock, like you know, stocked with like all these incredible tracks. But yeah, next, 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 next. Before I get. <laughs> to out of track but um blood on white satin so i went to watch uh, smile 2 and let me just say one of the best movies uh, of this year uh, it's just very jump scary i would still argue that the first uh smile is better in terms of lore here it's more on the main character focus in that sense um so keep that in mind but i think the budget here is like up to 100 naomi scott is just doing such a great job her acting is just impeccable so good uh but yeah um that's besides the point what really surprised me about it because the theme of the, the this movie instead of um is that the curse that was from the first movie now is latched onto a very famous pop star american pop star called sky riley which is of course um uh, played by Naomi Scott but yeah um go listen to it like the uh, as I said, like the music in this uh movie is just quite surprising but this song specifically especially the performance if you see it at the movies uh just you, you're gonna get impressed because the sound is incredible of course first of all like you gotta have great sound quality but aside from that I would say this song specifically is just fucking insane. It's giving like brats, it's giving hyper pop, it's giving all the above. It's just so fucking good. So, Blood on White Titan, on White Hutton, um, she's that girl. She's that girl. It's very edgy, very cool stuff. So, cool. Check it out. Check it out. Um, then I want to end with a bang, of course, which is APT by Rose and uh, Bruno Mars, of course. The pop the Blackpink girlies are just popping off recently. Like, they've been feeding us. This came out, like, as a surprise, I would say, because I think she announced it the day before it came out, which was this Friday, this past fr Friday. So it came out on this past Friday. I think she announced it on Thursday. Uh, so it was very much unexpected. We knew that the album was coming in December. She announced it before, but we didn't know anything about singles or anything. So this is the first single, the first offering from her upcoming first studio album as a soloist uh, called Rosie, the album. Uh, Rosé, of course, is the main vocalist from Blackpink. Some may call her the golden voice, gold voice of K-pop. She has that incredible, like, characteristic YG style of singing, but also very unique to herself as well. It's just so good. She's so talented. She has that vocal tone that is just, you know, captivating. And she's my favorite member from Blackpink, I would say. Like, she is my bias. But consider me shocked, because I also love Bruno Mars so much, and I've been craving and I've been asking for something from him like in terms of having an album or something i don't know like i want i want something from him but he like imagine my surprise when seeing um this you know popping up so i am incredibly 
excited for this well i was incredibly excited to begin with but i think after hearing the song i'm like so surprised in a in a very good way not to say that i was expecting something bad but i was not expecting this level of sophistication and attention to the details in that sense this song as in my opinion i'm gonna say is out straight like all right i already said it on twitter but this is probably the best solo project outside of yg that they've done uh, that any black mem member has done not because like it's like the others are bad in that sense but this i would say is the most western appealing i would say uh, but also you know still authentic to her roots but also you know it feels very natural and very well thought out and it's designed to be a hit you know what i mean like it's, it's designed while the other stuff that came out before i think they're incredibly good but they're still i think very k-pop adjacent still in a way in, in some sort of form this is this feels specifically maybe also because bruno mars is like co-signing this so it gives a bit of that edge but um even the way it sounds, the way like it's produced and it's filmed and everything, this is more like a Western, like pop type of uh, song. But I think what's really even smarter in a way is the fact that the concept of the song is about a Korean drinking game. So on the one hand, you're gonna bring something very un unusual and very intriguing, and the way it's uh, pronounced in the song, it's like very catchy and very um, gimmicky in a way. Apate, apate, apate. You know, like apartment, but it's like the name of the of the. Uh, of the of the game in that sense so in a way all the westerners who don't know about this game me included i didn't know anything about this before the song came out are gonna be super intrigued about what the fuck is she saying it sounds so so cap like so captivating so quirky so catchy you're gonna be singing and then you're gonna start wondering what the fuck that is well for the koreans who know this song damn well it's gonna be like a new warm and i'm gonna be like oh i can't believe she made a song using this typical you know jingle that we use for uh, to open the get, drink, the drinking game right so genius i think it's just genius honestly 100 percent. i just i'm in awe um yeah so kudos to eight i think um i've been seeing comments online saying like oh the blackpink girlies have been held back by uh, yg so much and i can understand to the extent of um them releasing so much stuff and so much material because that's definitely something that was not happening under yg because mainly i, I would say mainly because of Teddy. because if you see baby monster or any other group on the they actually are quite consistent with projects and everything else but blackpink has been renowned for like having very few tracks which again i don't think it was a bad thing for the group itself when they were starting off and they were like getting famous because um you know quality over quantity i would say and it's like it keeps that mysterious vibe that they usually have like that you know it girls type of situation but so that i can concede i think now that they're solo doing their solos in different like you know companies and all that stuff it we're getting a lot of output in that sense but i think sound wise they're still I don't think the YG was like not making them express themselves. Like this, the all the all all of these solos outside of YG that we've heard, I would argue that they are actually still very YG at their core. I think YG could still release these tracks. I would say, because for example, Lisa, I think her her songs are specifically Rockstar is very like you know YG adjacent. I would say YG could release that track. Uh, maybe New Woman and Kiss Me are a bit different. But if she wanted to do pop, she could. But I think the scope is a bit different because she has her own, like, a Western label would be better for that. But even Jenny's uh, mantra, I think it's still very much Jenny, YG, Jenny, Jenny K-pop, Jenny at her core. And even this, to be fair, even though I said, like, it's very Western appealing, in that sense, a very, like, a proper Western pop song, I think this is still very much fitting the slot of Rosé in YG as well. Like, she has that bit of that more, like, a rock guitar uh, guitar -y and everything else type of you know singer songwriter type of vibe even in yg when she did her solo there so i still think in in some way you can still see feel the w yg dna in them and in, in their solo releases but yeah so slay but anyways this song this song is also incredible uh, and i would argue that it's probably the I would, again it's probably the best song it is uh, out of the the bunch that came out after yg but um and it's also doing so well, like, 
so he's probably the the most viewed K-pop, well K-pop release, I guess if you want to call it K-pop release, of this year. So in like in twenty four hours, so so like it's going viral. It's going. It's number one in Korea at the moment. Like you know, on all charts, um, it's slowly like climbing up on number one in Spotify as well. So great. Um, yeah, so go stream it uh, if you like a bit of that vibe, rocky sh like fifties rock grease type of vibe as well. Uh, I would say this is a a good track for you. And with that, I think we're done with the songs. So um, let's move on to the the more serious topics. I would say. Um, so. Well, well, how how to start this whole topic? I think I want to start off with uh, the One Direction story first. Um, so, as you've known, as you may have known, uh, last Wednesday was it? I think it was Wednesday. Um, the news broke out that Liam Payne was found dead in Brazil and allegedly fell from uh, the third floor of a building. Then photos came out, um, came out of, like, well, very triggering photos, I would say. I don't know why they, the trades decided to put them, which is fucking insane to me, but, um, they posted photo of his, photos of his actual body, TMZ posted photos of his, uh, corpse, basically, found on the, on the crime scene, basically, um, and... They also posted photos of his apartment being completely destroyed. So clearly, something happened in the in the apartment. He must have there were, there were drugs, so he was probably under the influence, and he lost his um, his temper or something. He just had a mental breakdown, probably, and then maybe. Oh, I mean, he's pretty self um, yeah, self, self explanatory what happened, I guess. So I don't need to like delve into that even more, but. Yeah, this, I guess, came in some way as a shock because, in, in some sorts, because, um, well, a week, or I think a week before, two weeks before, he was seen at Niall's concert and he was, you know, very supportive and he took uh, photos with him as well, I think, I believe, but there were videos of him also jamming to the songs. He was being very supportive, so nothing seemed too wrong in that sense. But, um, yet again, we he's been very vocal about his struggles with addiction, and um, it's, so it wasn't a surprise in that sense, I would say. Um, but, yeah, it was a heartbreaking situation, I would say, and um, I've been completely appalled by the way the internet has been handling this, and I think, in a way, the internet, is all, uh, the internet also has had a hand, a play here, pushing him to do some of these things, um, because, well, Liam Payne, if you haven't, if you have been living on the rock, Liam Payne has been the laughing stock post One Direction, I guess, between all the members. Like people have been making fun of him. Ever since he left the group, ever since he dropped his solos, and yeah, so and then he's been harassed online for doing some very um, bad things. I would say to his previous partners, there has been a lot of um, reports, I guess, of him being quite violent towards some of his exes and abusive in some sort uh, form and the people of course have been trying to call him uncomfortable but going to the extreme far uh well, further I guess like measures the furthest measures ever which is basically bullying him and you know sending him death threats and a lot of ba bad and dark stuff and couple that with addiction um I think it's not, it must have not it must not have been easy for him to be in his headspace, I guess. So, yeah, I would say that we're like the internet. We're I'm I'm not I never done anything of the sort. I I'm actually thankfully I was raised correctly by my parents, and I do not go on the internet to bully people because that's not uh, a nice thing to do. And there are 
of course plenty of reasons why you shouldn't do it and if you are doing it then i beg you to stop if you don't like someone or if you don't um uh, want to be you know if you despise someone or you don't like someone just disassociate just get away from them instead of harassing them because you don't know what you don't want to be like, you don't want to have an impact of this sort you know what i mean this is very serious and this is very um honestly quite appalling and quite I, I lose faith in humanity whenever i see these things happening because it's just so disgusting honestly but anyways i people are uh, even and the, the more what, what's even more disgusting i would say that even after his death people are still making fun of him and still making fun of the situation which is not funny at all first of all because we're dealing with someone who died so and to the point where his ex um fiance i would say like the mom of his son had to come out cheryl uh cheryl um had to come out and beg people to stop and to let him be at peace and just respect his son now and just like you know leave him you know let him rest in peace at least which is crazy to me which is insane people don't have to beg you to do this like you need you guys need to like learn to first of all grow the fuck up and stop like and take and take th things serious. Not everything is a joke in life. Not everything is a joke. Life is serious sometimes. You need to know when to joke about things and when to not joke about things and when to stop. And this is clearly one of the biggest signs where you guys should just like get get a fucking life and stop doing this shit. I completely understand that he's he has not done he's not been the best human being ever. He's done a lot of very questionable stuff. But this does not warrant this amount of you know disgusting behavior i would say and i think people also lack a lot of empathy when it comes to people who deal with uh, abuse uh, sorry not abuse like abuse of uh, substance in a sense and drug usage um they don't realize that it's actually a disease and it affects the way you act and the way you think and the way you um behave with other people and it's a very difficult line to walk, of course, and it's not an excuse for what he, what he has done, but I think the context is always very important, and for people to discount it and just say that he's a, you know, it's a piece of shit and, like, he deserves death and all that stuff, well, you guys are, frankly, you know, disgusting people, are ignorant people, you are just, you know, a bunch of uh, immature people, you don't have anything much to say you don't have any emotional intelligence to comprehend the situation so i don't want to hear it whatever but i just hope that you guys stop doing this shit because this is very serious stuff and it's not something that can be taken lightly whatsoever you know um but yeah i've seen all the posts um from the previous bandmates it was very touching uh so uh, it's just a very heartbreaking situation. I feel like um, it just brought me back to like like you know the days where they were very popular. I was never like a big fan of the one of One Direction. Of course, I know about them. I knew about them. All my friends listen to them. I do know a couple of songs. Of course, I wouldn't say I was like a Directioner in that sense, but they were a big part of just as an intense and you know I was a teen in, in in those years, so they were quite you know the big figures in that in that time. So yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I would say, like, this is a, a big lesson in terms of cyberbullying, and also that you don't know who you're dealing with, you don't know celebrities, you don't know what's their mental state and what you're, like, how you, you can affect people with your words and your hatred, so this should be a very big lesson, no, simply because, like, they're famous and they have everything, um, you shouldn't, you know, assume that they're doing fine and they can take whatever, you know? They can take it, they can take the bullying or whatever. This is just something very serious and very, you know, reproachable in that sense. And I just hope you, all you guys who, like, who are very insensitive and are just, like, discounting this thing as, you know, karma or whatever the fuck you guys are saying online is just fucking disgusting, honestly. But I hope you guys, like... Honestly, you never have to deal with, like, these situations close to you. And that's the thing that really, like, annoys me, is that just because it's not happening around you or it's not something that you have experienced with, it doesn't mean you cannot have, you cannot have, you cannot have empathy. I've never had 
anything of the sort happening in my life or known anyone uh, uh, um, who had to experience these things. But it doesn't take much to have emotional intelligence. That's what I'm saying. You know, you guys should go back to school, to back to reading things and learning how to socialize with people. And instead of like, you know, hiding behind a screen and just throwing hatred, you guys should just like grow the fuck up. That's it. That's the, and this is the last time when I talk about this, I don't want to talk about this topic anymore, I was really tempted not to talk about this, but I felt like I needed to come on here and say what I thought about this whole situation, this whole debacle. I just hope his family and his loved ones are uh, doing okay now, and yeah, please stop this whole shenanigans, you know? Anyways, let's go to like a slightly more lighthearted topic, because I'm pissed off. This is still not very, like, you know, very happy, but we're talking about K-pop drama and the insane shit that's going down. This year has been crazy for K-pop. Some people are saying, is it the downfall of K-pop? Maybe. I don't know. No, I don't think so. No, not in that sense, but it's definitely reflecting bad on certain um, labels, I would say, and how they're treating, and I think also, also in general Korea, the Korean culture... Like these are the bad sides of the bad sides of Korean culture and how still very conservative Korea Korea is, right? Uh, but anyways, what are we talking about? First of all, we're talking about Sungan, which is a member of a new group under SM Entertainment called Rise. SM is famous for groups like Espa, groups like SNSD, Girls Generation, um, groups like Red Velvet, groups like EXO. Um, so, yeah, what happened? Basically, this guy was uh, kicked out of the group, like, shortly after their debut, because pictures came up online of him having a girlfriend before debuting. Duh, crazy shit, oh my god, I cannot believe that. Like, And also for, like, being caught smoking or whatever, and this was, more, like, good enough as a reason to kick him out of the group. Now, I know if you're from the West, you're going to be like, what the fuck is the deal with K-pop? Why do they do this shit all the fucking time? It's like, well, Korea is very conservative, again, it's a very conservative place, and it may not look like it, but it is, and the uh, idol culture, the celebrity culture there is even more toxic, I would say, in some aspects uh, compared to the Western one. Like, idols should be having a pristine image, should be as reachable in that sense as like lustable as possible and if you taint that image even though for us this is not tainting at all because it's for us it's like a human experience and it, sh it is also for korean people but they don't see that for idols and for the industry so um this was good enough as a reason to kick him out of the group and of course since k-pop has become very more very much more global and this group specifically has been you know, quite um, popular, I guess, in the West as well. Western fans were not having this shit anymore. And they were petitioning and making their voices being heard. And they boycotted a bit of the group as well. Until, like, because they wanted the, the, the guy to come back. He wasn't really kicked out at first. He was just, like, on a hi hiatus for a while. For a long while. For a year, I would say, maybe. Uh, but, you know... It was pretty clear, like, there was no hope, at, at least at the beginning, that he was going to come back. Like, it was a cl classic story of him being discontinued of, from the group and never coming back, basically. So, but the Western fans kept on going, kept on, like, pushing for this to to happen. And so, he finally, which was <laughs> literally a very short-lived story, but he was announced to, like, you know, to have come back to the group. And in less than two days, he was kicked out of the group again. Because as soon as he came back, the Korean fans started losing their fucking shit. They sent um, so many messages to... The, they started boycotting the group, saying that they should never allow this guy to come back. And the pressure was so big on SM Entertainment that they decided to intend, instead like just drop him off again. He uh, put out a statement saying that it was his decision to come out of the group and he didn't really want it to, to affect the, the fame of the group anymore and their reputation, so he decided to go out. But I think it's actually the label who pushed him out again. And disgusting things up and like they put some more cherry roses, like some, you know, decorations outside of the building saying that Rise is 7 
uh, sorry, Rice is six, which like means all the members without him, basically, like they support a group without him. There was a lot of crazy shit happening, and people doing TikTok, like Korean fans doing TikTok in front of the building, like celebrating his, like, you know, departure. Like, it was just fucking insane. Um, but the outtake from this is. Um, Basically, that the Korean culture is just crazy, I would say. And uh, despite, you know, K pop becoming so global, I think there is still a big gap that needs to be closed between society and K pop itself, like the culture and the, the, the audience. And I would say we need to keep pushing for these things to change because it's just not acceptable, I think, for a person to be doing their own thing and having a girlfriend, God forbid, and smoking, which is not a big deal. Like, they should be able to. Um, do what they want and have their own fucking freedom god damn it um so yeah <clears throat> i don't know it's very sad and people now like western fans are again trying to boycott the entire label now and other groups under the label which is i don't know maybe extreme but also i get it like i hope things change in k-pop this year has been quite challenging because there's been a lot of crazy stuff coming out between bullying on the place of work and this and other people leaving groups because of the same similar reasons as well like you cannot have a global k-pop like a k-pop that tries to appeal to the west without meeting the needs of the global market you know what i mean and the global fandoms like and it's a difficult situation because you cannot make society evolve so quickly but also if you want to keep doing this, if you want to keep marketing towards global audiences, you need to, like, the labels need to, like, grow a fucking pair and deal with it. You know? Just deal with it. Just protect your artists. Protect your artists. You know, you, they're, they're going to have the support that they need because people care about these issues, specifically in the West. So, you need to protect these things and create change. Create change. Inform people and educate people on these things. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yikes. Um, but I do hope he, like, uh, above all, I think, I hope Sungan is doing okay. I hope he's not, you know, I hope they're taking care of him and I hope he's just, you know. At this point, I would say just, like, dude, just leave the industry. It's better for yourself as well. Like, you are, you deserve a break. You deserve to be, you know, doing you. Come to the West. Come here, have fun here, you know, like, be be free here. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that sucks. It's not a nice thing to say, I guess, but because you don't want to leave your country because it's so bad, but it is sometimes like that, and I can relate to that a lot. If you come from a com conservative country, sometimes the only choice is to escape. But I hope it doesn't come to that for him, and I hope he can have a nice life there, of course, but it's just frightening, honestly. But, yeah. Then... Um, we also have, um, well, Honey from New Jeans, just to update you guys on the New Jeans situation and Hybe. Um, she went to uh, testify at, um, basically it was like a, a national, I think it was in Korea basically, uh, in the Korean parliament. She went to testify on workplace bullying and artists' rights, right? Um, and she testified about the recent situation that uh, was surrounding um, New Jeans and, of course, the previous drama. By the way, check out my other episodes because I've covered this drama extensively. So you can go check it out. I call these episodes like K-pop drama, whatever. But I talked about this before. But anyways, she went to testify in, like, um, begging, basically, for change to happen and... You know, this is the things we need to care about. Like, you know, she feels powerless in this point because, you know, she's being forced into this whole, like, um, corporate drama situation and she cannot express herself as an artist and she's being threatened and she's scared to work in her own, you know, company. You know what I mean? Which is insane. She's not protected. She doesn't feel protected. She feels quite vulnerable in a place like this. She's begging for things to change and to have her voice heard and to just restore peace in the workplace and to have a well conducive environment where she doesn't feel um put 
second and you know she wants to feel heard which is like basic human rights by the way so yeah and she's also of course advocating for her group to like you know choose their own you know people to work with and not be like you know ping pong i guess like around these like ceos and all that shit like you know she wants things to be back to normal and to have a safe uh working environment um so yeah i am and she has every right to do so she was so cute um and she was very like you know i cried with her she was crying in uh, when she was doing some of these um intervenants uh, what i call like you know speeches at the at the parliament but i fell for her i feel very bad for these girls i i said also in my other episodes that i really hope that at least they can like you know move on from this whole thing maybe sign with a different label completely or just detach themselves from this company or maybe just disband and just like have a nice time off and that's it because now everything has been cancelled like the company has cancelled their album releases and they've put them on hold for in, like in that indefinitely i would say so we don't know when they're gonna come back in that sense but people still love them and they deserve to pursue their dreams in a company that treats them well and listens to them to their you know feedback and their needs so yeah i feel very strongly about these things but um again another example of um korea needs to change korea needs to be you know i mean this is a bit different i would say because like corporate drama happens everywhere also in the west a lot of like you know bullying on work on, on the work environment like in the work environment happen all the time um so yeah but needless to say that this is very important and um, i'll be keeping a, an eye on this and best believe that i will be commenting on it and you know catching you guys up on whatever it's gonna happen next but yeah oh by the way they also knew their ceo the one that they don't really like it was planted there by the higher ups but also they're testifying against i guess like i guess that crazy shit happened uh, some things came out saying that the company has, uh, well, basically hit a death on the workplace as well, which is insane. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, how did that even happen? How did that even, like, you know... There's so many dark things happening in K-pop, I don't even understand how is this, like, possible. But, um, yeah, crazy shit, crazy shit. But enough, enough of the drama. This is pretty much a wrap-up. That's it. I don't want to talk about drama anymore. I don't want to talk about these dark things anymore. I want to move on. And I'll see you guys next week. Hopefully with some like more light-hearted um, topics to talk about. But also, happy last uh, leg of the era tour. Taylor Swift, I had to comment on it. Her new bodysuit for the Reputation Tour. Ever the Reputation set. Incredible. The gold. So good. And the... the Secret Songs uh, dress, also fucking cool. Um, cannot wait to see what happens next. Deputation is gonna happen. Um, maybe next year. But though, I think she's gonna announce it at the end of this the leg. But, yeah. Um, I'll see you guys next week. And enjoy the week ahead. Keep on slaying. It's almost November, so... And it's almost Halloween as well. Hope you guys have a nice Halloween as well. But we're going to talk about it next week before the actual Halloween day happens. But, yeah. Period. See you guys soon. Bye.